So welcome to the uh, first uh, Ibiza quiz. Um, we're going to start a brand new season in Ibiza, uh, back at Club High. Uh, to be honest, I didn't expect it. It was such a success. Uh, no disrespect to these guys, but you know me from trance, and these guys are heroes in their own category, right? Sort of, and, if you uh, say so. In the in the um, in the mix, uh, something magical happened because. Uh, normally I'm, I'm on the stage with uh, other trans guys and I was in high uh, but for this year I decided to collaborate with other uh, uh, Dutch heroes and to do something completely new. So my first question, how was your first season in Ibiza? Um, it was very surprising for me actually because the, like you said the first time we we start doing this, we, we both saw it as a challenge, like you saw it as a challenge, we saw it as a challenge and we just went for it. In the beginning we were like, okay, is it gonna work? But I think after three, four weeks we saw already how packed it was. Our room was even packed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. I mean, um, to see, uh, let's say, let's call our style house music and trance. I think sometimes people get, get uh, they're done with house music, go to the trance stage. It's like a big, like a small festival every week. So people can go to trance and house music. So I think that's the reason why it works. But and before we started, it was kind of scary. Yeah, yeah, I know. And be besides that, I think also for because Armin is an example of he stays true to what he's doing, and we're the same. We always follow our heart and play with our heart, and that works. I think people will always reflect on that on, on the as they try to feed a feed of the energy of the DJ, and we always give our heart and, and energy and always the fullest hundred percent on everything we do. And Armin does the same thing. And and what was your favorite moment of of last year? Your favorite memory? Is there something that springs to mind? Well, the whole season was amazing, but. The closing was like above everything yeah. because everyone came together and we all had an amazing time. I think playing just the closing, I think we didn't even close, we were just playing, playing, and playing until what time? I don't even know. The closing, I don't remember a lot actually, to be honest. To be honest. But I think what was really memorable that we had uh, one night, uh, Afrojack, Martin Garrix. Yeah, wasn't that the closing? Was that the closing? No, 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 it was I don't the think second so. to last yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. And every was everybody was there. If you think about it, how how big that lineup was in <laughs> one night actually. Five big Dutch heroes in the DJ booth. Everybody went bananas. It was it was really really crazy. Did you learn any any big lessons from last year? Sleep a little more before the show. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, what and what what makes uh, uh, you were doing the great back to back? What what makes a great back to back set? Do you think? Um, I think to go in without even. Talking, what are you gonna do? We it, it, it's also harder for uh, to ask us this question because uh, for us it's not really back to back. For us, when I'm playing alone, it's more like I'm only fifty percent. So yeah, it's yeah. kind of hard. You, you guys are playing back to back. Yeah, anyway. I, I don't think, know how you approach the set. But yeah. how, how it started with us the back to back was teasing each other. Like, okay, I play this record. What are you gonna play? So <laughs> keep the energy high, and that's how we still do it, but a little bit more balanced, I think. So how do you? I mean, you guys, how do you guys prepare a set? Is it always like you're just gonna go with the flow, or do you like when you do a big main stage set, or play a club in the high? Is it, you prepare every set, every track that you're gonna no, play? No, no, not at all. Actually, club sets we never prepare. Actually, we just know what we're gonna do. We wanna bring the energy. We know what music we have both, and it's funny because sometimes. We, we try to say, oh, play this track after this track, and he's already selected. So we, <laughs> we so sync with that. Uh, I think the, the, the hardest thing for us is the one hour sets on festivals. That's where we go in and talk about what we want to do. Because we normally, if we, want, if we play three hours, it's really easy for us. But one hour sets for us is a little difficult. But what? still, when we play Ibiza, it's uh, a little different. But we play a high hour room, because you don't, may, you don't select the songs that are really that loud and that uh, outgoing. I think it's more... Uh, no, I won't. I wouldn't say loungy, but more chill. What is yeah. so? What is the Sonnery James and Ryan Marciano? It's house music, but high on steroids or high <laughs> energy house music. Yeah, something on steroids. Yeah, and, and sexy. <laughs> yeah, it's really sexy. Sexy yeah. house music. Sexy house music. Because I try to play. I, I try to play some tracks of yours in, in sets of mine when yeah. I play like more clubby sets or longer yeah. sets. 
and the crowd reaction is totally different when I play it. <laughs> I think it's it's, uh, it's like is we gonna play a trans music now? I think people <laughs> gonna be like, uh, mm, and that's why it works between us. I think because that's what I say. You stand behind what you do, and you can yeah. translate it to the crowd like what you play, and that's the same with us. I think if you, if I give if I give you my USB stick, you have to play with it. Like, oh, what do I, what do I have to do with this? How do I bring this to the crowd? And the same if I get your USB stick, mm, this track. Went really hard when Army played, but I played people looking at me. So no, we've been playing some tracks of yours, but then I have to be like this, and then Sony <laughs> looks at me and it's like a little awkward, you know? So. No, I mean, the chemistry between us, I mean, the track we made, it's, I, you, it's, you can't really put it in a box. No. I mean, you know, it's, 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 that's what I say. It kind of works somewhere in the middle. Well, for me, still, doing a track with you guys yeah. uh, was a challenge because, of course, our worlds are different, and I think. We respect that in each other that you are in your world yeah. i'm in my world and i think especially nowadays maybe this you know it's not meant as a political statement but i think you could see it like that the way i am in the music industry right now is i don't want to see the differences exactly i want to see where we can meet exactly without without like you got pulling you guys too much out of because i do you know when we went into the studio together we had a clear mission to make a track that yeah, you could play in your sets, exactly. and I could play in my set. Well, that was a hard battle, you know. Because you we also, it's nice to work with you. Because you say, listen, don't say you like it just because you really need to like it. Yeah, and because then, you have to play it. And that was the thing for us. Okay, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, we must go. And you have to play yeah, it. Yeah, and it was. I think it still works for us. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Uh, before each event, what's your weekly ritual? My weekly ritual is actually starts with preparing my radio show every week. Mm. Uh, so I go all through all the new music. I organize it. I'm very organized in my uh, in my software, and then I make folders. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, this is my my record box. This is what I want to play in this set. This is what I want to play in that set. But I always end up playing uh, tracks from different folders. I never play exactly like how I organize it beforehand. Ah. I always go like, okay. Maybe I can try this. I remember the first time I played in high, I was super scared because it was a brand new club and everything was new. And I thought I had to play really, really underground. Yeah. So my first set I played, I wasn't happy because it was too deep. Too dark, yeah. And people just came to see Armin. Yeah. So I decided to, a little bit like I did it in Vegas. Uh, I didn't want to please too much, uh, but I want to give something a little bit and also want to play something that I could play. And I was very conscious that because when you guys start playing, uh, there hap something happens in my room too. I can see when you guys start because you start a little bit later. Yeah. Right? Oh shit. So I, I see that because <laughs> pe usually people come for my opening, but they also come for your opening because yeah, yeah, yeah. they want to, and then they start walking around. So, so for me, it was kind of like, okay, I'm just gonna because I know you guys are already gonna play that housey stuff. So yeah. I'm gonna play something that. If you walk from your room to my room, so it's not a different. slap in your face, but it is something different. It's funny because that's the, how we approach it. We try to keep it really clubby in the, in the club yeah. room. Yeah. It's kind of funny you mentioned this also because my moment I really was like, okay, this night is, night is going to work, <laughs> is when I had... We had Armin from Bureau shirts in our <laughs> in room. <our> room. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, this night is gonna do well. This is yeah. a good night. <laughs> so that's why you see that it works. People are they they just um, yeah. loving the night. Go around. They're going yeah. around yeah. and yeah. they accept it. It's yeah. really nice. And your personal ritual, like something you do what people don't know. You wanna share it with us? <clears throat> <laughs> no. Nothing? No. My personal ritual is well. I have a big, uh, big, big crew, and I, I guess part of my ritual is going over the set a little bit with them. I don't want to leave them completely in the dark with everything that I do. So yeah. we usually have a, a an intro. Nice. The intro is 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 fixed. I usually tell them like, okay, I'm going to play this track around this time, especially if there's somebody in the house that I I want to play the track mm -hmm. for. I usually know my last track as well. Um, and I have, I guess, my DJ nap is my ritual. Yeah, I so. always before every show I have to to sleep even if it's like fifteen minutes. <laughs> Same thing. That's a DJ thing. I think. As a DJ now, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like sort of sort of clearing, clearing your head my, yeah. and, go in. and go like okay, yeah, close okay. off and and just be like completely in the zone. And I just want to be in bed. I just want to watch some stupid cartoon or a stupid movie. Just be on your own. Be yourself, on my own, and, and then I feel energized. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We recognize it. Yeah. It's like top sport, you know. Cause it is. Oh, whether we whether you like it or not, every set that we do, you're only as good as your last set. True. And we are very aware that every person that comes to the club deserves the best night. That's it. So every party, people pay pay a ticket. For you, it's just an, another one, but you always have to put it 100%. No, 100%. Yeah. 110%. So, one more thing. 
What is always in the army from Buren Ryder? Always. Um, well, recently, don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> this is so not sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, not sexy then. Uh, it's actually tea with honey and coffee. Oh, coffee. Yeah, yeah I like oh, yeah. I like to go on. Uh, I like I stopped drinking a little bit because of the you know I'm not. You look amazing. 28 man. anymore. <laughs> you look like it. <laughs> But uh, no, it's coffee. Actually, yeah. I start drinking coffee now yeah. for every. That's day. a father thing, I think. I start drinking coffee when I yeah. became a dad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> drinking coffee for for my show, and I feel nice and excited. I used to, you know, drink before every show. Yeah. And if they, if these guys are in the house, I always have to drink <laughs> shots. <laughs> yes. But I gotta say, my favorite thing of the whole night, and this has become some sort of a tradition in our night in Ibiza, is when I finish my set around five or quarter to five. I come to you guys yeah. in, the, in the booths. Sometimes I play along with them, sometimes I don't. Yeah. But it's always like, I love to come to your room because the vibe is it's different. Chilling, yeah, yeah. It's chilling and there's always, you know, I don't know, these guys are always rocking it. The DJ booth is always full with friends yeah. and guests and, and nice people. So I always come to, if, if time permits, because sometimes, you know, you have to yeah, go on the next shout, flight. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, if I if time permits, I always come to your uh, to your DJ booth, and those are my favorite memories, man. Seriously, yeah, not not just great. from Ibiza, but I think from my entire career, because you guys bring something, you know, like this is what every fan of you, and I'm sure you hear this all the time. But for me, it's like you guys bring something unique, like positive energy, like you know, you can't, I can't stop dancing when I see you guys playing. We always say, and it's not because it's you, we're not trans guys. No. But to see you playing in trans, how we enjoy it and <laughs> bring it, that's what people want. That's yeah. what, you, what people appreciate, even if they're not like trans music. And that's yeah. what you have as well. So, yeah. so. that's why we're, so where we connect somewhere, I think. Do you have one more question for... Uh, uh, why is Ibiza still important for clubbers? Wow. Ibiza is still important for clubbers because it's the place where it all happens. Um, Trust me, I do have a hate-love relationship with the island because, you know, sometimes it's just too full or, yeah. uh, you know, you're on the other side of the island or, you know, you get too much in the chill mode and you have to play. But, you know, it, it, there is a magic about Ibiza. Um, and it took me a while to understand it, the magic. First time I came to Ibiza was the year 2000. I played for Judge Jules on, Ju on Judgment Sunday in Eden. Wow. That's and... I didn't understand it because everybody was said, "Ah, Ibiza, Ibiza, yeah, yeah. it's the, it's the, it's the hype, it's the big thing, it's a blah blah blah." And I was like, "I don't get it. I don't, yeah, yeah, I, I don't get what, what, what is this thing about Ibiza? Why is it so special?" You have to grow into it. I you have to grow that. into it. Yeah. You have to understand that they uh, the DJs play different. Uh, they, 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 I think they excel. Uh, there's always an Ibiza record every year. There's a certain vibe on the island. You can't escape it, really. Yeah. There's there's these restaurants where you need to go. There's the nightclubs you need to, to see. There's the beaches. It's the sunset. It's a mix of everything uh, that makes Ibiza what it is. Yeah. Okay, from an artist's perspective, do you think it's important that Ibiza is still doing what it's doing it's for DJs to go there and and get inspired? Is it still yeah. important? Yeah. If, if if there would be one year, I wouldn't go to Ibiza. I would still come just yeah. to listen to a couple of DJ sets yeah. because uh, there's always a special vibe going yes, on. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah. Like, uh, like, like this year, um, I, the the Kolsch record, Kol, DJ Kolsch. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is one of the tracks that if I, I heard it already in in I think April or May. You can taste the beats already. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. one of those tracks that when they play it in a restaurant, people are going to go. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And it's only in Ibiza. You, it, it, it's something you know with with the water, the beach, with Formentera, with the restaurants during the day, like. People yeah. adapt to the whole yeah. vibe. One, one, one story I want to say about Ibiza, it's so funny. When you land in Ibiza and you come from Holland, first thing you do is you call the person that's waiting for you. So like, oh, come on, let's go. Uh, where, where do we yeah. eat? What, what do we do? And then the person on the other side, if, he's, if he or she is longer on the island than three days, the person always goes, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Chill, man. I'm coming to you. <laughs> Relax. That's and after funny, three yeah. days, you're the same. The same. Because in the beginning you're like, okay, uh, we have to go, we have to go eat, play, eat, eat, eat. Uh, where, 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 where's my hotel, where's my interview, interview. Interview. And, and then And then after three days you go like, hey man, no, no I'm a half yeah, hour yeah. late. Yeah, no worries. No, don't worry, uh, that's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm showing up, oh, it's okay man, if you come half hour later, it's fine. That's no. also Spanish. It's Spanish, Spanish, yeah. you know, uh, 
Yeah, everything yeah, no. comes. No, but know. I have the same thing when our friends have coming and then you pick them up from the airport. They're always the same way. It's they're actually like, true. You do, I don't even want to invite <laughs> friends anymore. I'm like, stressed yeah. out. Yeah. We're stressed chilling. Out. We're yeah. chilling. Yeah. Ibiza has a different yeah. rhythm. Yeah. 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 If yeah. Ibiza is all about uh, you know zoning out, yeah. relaxing with your friends, with your family, having a good time. And it just it just affects you. So let's say Ibiza has a sort of detox for DJs. <laughs> music, musical, <laughs> musical detox. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, this is it from uh, yeah. from Sonnery James, Ryan Marciano, and Armin Van Buren. Uh, we really can't wait to see you this summer. Uh, it's the hot spot, uh, and trust me, yeah, you will love it. Every night we're there. Every uh, Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night yeah. we're there. Yeah. Having yeah. coffees before ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be partying with you. Looking forward. Looking forward to see you.